Hey everyone. How's it going? Welcome back. It's been a while since we posted a video of the two of us, but we're back and here to answer some more questions. Mm -hmm. Today we wanted to talk about long distance relationships because most of the questions that we got were about long distance relationships and we seem to be good at a long distance relationship. I guess we passed the test. <laughs> okay, the first question was, how did you and Daniel discern how much to communicate and visit each other as you were dating? Well, I guess in our case, obviously I think it depends on per, you know, what is the long distance? Obviously, you know, long is a relative kind of a thing. Is long 500 miles? Are you living two states apart? Are True. you living, you know, nationwide? Are you living, like we were like actually across the world in two different continents. Obviously we were stuck to different schedules. So I was still in school. I was in grad school. M was, uh, you know, obviously traveling. That's how we met, obviously traveling, mm -hmm. you know, as her full-time job. And so for me, I was on tight, um, you know, like pre-scheduled vacations and holidays and stuff like that that you would have off, you know, when you're in school and whatnot. So that was very easy to decide already, okay, when are we gonna see each other? Because there was, you know, not a lot of point when if I was in school and very busy for Emily to come and travel all the way across the world and then, you know, I couldn't spend time with her. So we saw each other about every, I would say, what was a month, month and a half, two months, something like that? Two months, two and a half months. Yeah, about, nah, not two and a half months. Yes. Really? Uh-huh. Oh, that, that, that was long. <laughs> that was a long time. Um, so yeah, we, we saw... Did we did it, yeah. So we saw each other kind of regular, I guess, in long distance terms. Yeah. I mean, long that's a long time. time. Yeah. This person asked, how, how do you discern how much to meet? <laughs> communicate? After we first met, we could only talk on Saturdays. Because I was in a job with our time difference where... I couldn't talk to him all day at work, and then when I was off work, he was sleeping. So we mm -hmm. Skyped on Saturdays, and that was it. We got to talk to each other once a week. That's true. That was like the first, what, two months-ish? That was the first, months yeah. Ish that yeah. we knew each other? So, you don't really discern how much to communicate. You just go with the flow of your schedule in your life. Yeah, but also the schedule in your life, and but also obviously the schedule that you feel in your heart, in a sense. Right. You know, you go with the flow. Because obviously, if you're really attracted to someone, uh, you know, you want to spend time, you want to be in contact with that someone. Um, but it's good in, in any relationship, being a long distance relationship or, you know, a quote unquote normal relationship where you're, you know, living up too far from each other or whatnot, is that you, you know, have that normal, you know, you don't want to be over eager, hey, every single minute, like what all are you doing? Like consumed by your relationship. Yeah, exactly. You gotta go out and live your life. Exactly, yeah. Long distance relationship, normal relationship, anything. You anything. have to be your own person. Do your own thing. So we were talking to each other 24 hours a day. No, we were living our lives and having our relationship as part of our lives, but not consuming our entire lives. No, but so I think it's very important to not be over eager to think, hey, what is, you know, you know, when do we go, when are we going to go do something or, or when are we going to talk? Like he's out with his friends. I'm so yeah, annoyed. Exactly. I want him to talk to me. You got to just be relaxed. Exactly. Yeah. You got to be relaxed about it. And you got to know that, Hey, this is something that we both want. What about cost of transportation? So cost of transportation. I think it's good for when you guys are just dating to, for the guy, you know, to pay, if you're doing long distance for the guy to pay the guys and for the girl to pay her girls things. Yeah, when, when you just start just up dating. dating. Yeah. Because you're talking about, Significant amount of money if you're going to be traveling right. or whatnot. Of any air airfare at all. Yeah, exactly. And so if that occurs, I, I would say in the initial stage of the relationship, for sure, to have the both ends of the party, you know, take care of that on their own. Unless the one person, you know, is a lot more stable than the other person. There's some relationships where that's true. It's like, you know, they don't have a job or they're a student in school and they're not making any money and the other person in the relationship has a stable job and they're making the money. So there are, it's like a case by case basis. Yeah. But for us, we found it better for us to each pay for our own yeah. individual airfare, etc. But the reasoning behind that is because especially in the initial phases of the relationship, you don't want to, you know, come in this situation where let's say I would uh, pay for Emily's trip to fly over to Holland to Europe. You know, which is obviously significant. Again, significant amount of money that would, you know, uh, cost something and whatnot. And then that Emily would come over, but actually, then you determine, which is obviously fine if that's the way it goes as well, that it doesn't work out. And maybe you don't fit together as you initially thought right. you would fit. But it's very easy to get a situation created, an initial a situation of, hey, he paid all this money to get me out here. So now I have to, you know, roll with it or right. go and do, and you have a sense of guilt um, because you think, hey, 
he spent this money, I came all this way, but actually I'm not that attracted to him or you know, yeah. vice versa or what it is. And you create a kind of awkward <laughs> situation, unintentionally, but that can easily be created, especially in that beginning yeah. stage. So that's why I would say in the initial yeah. stage is really to pay for your own thing, for him to pay, for her to pay for her own thing. So that if you want to back out, you don't feel awkward. Exactly. How did you know to keep going when times got tough in your relationship, especially when you were thousands of miles apart and couldn't work things out in person? What was it that kept you from giving up? Whoa. That's a big one. It's obvious um, in long distance relationships that times are going to go bad sometimes, that they're gonna be really, really, really hard. We made it. Yes. Oh my we gosh, they, we had some really, and people don't believe us when we say it. We say like we had some really, really, really difficult times and people are like, really? Yeah. When we tell them that, like they're surprised and you know, any long distance relationship, there's some days where you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. This is way too hard. Cause you haven't seen the person in nine weeks and you're fighting and you know, it's ugly and you think like, why am I even doing this? Um, how did we know to keep going? We knew at the beginning of our relationship that God had convicted us that this was what he was calling us to do. Not like it's something that we wanted to do, but we also knew that God was calling us to do it. And during the really, really difficult times, we would really pray through it and say, ask God, like, is this really what you want us to do? Because this really is not fun right now. Yeah. But like, do you want us to keep going? And the answer was always yes in both of our hearts. And the, even that yes sometimes was a tough pill to swallow because there were definitely times in our relationship where we were both on our wits end and oh we were like, hey, you know, I'm over this. Like, this isn't, really, you haven't seen each other in that long. You're fighting, like, things aren't going smooth. You know, there's just hiccups in life in general. And you kind of think, this is ridiculous. How could this ever work? Exactly. Like, how could we really ever get married? Yeah, and then you think, oh, let's, you know, now that you're together, you can sit down in the same room, you can hold each other's hand, and you can just, Yay. again, yeah, you can, you know, now you don't have to say anything, and you, you know, you can work it out in that way. But being on this, you're, again, you're constantly on the phone. You're, you know, you're praying Skype doesn't freeze up to five pixels on your screen, and oh. you, you don't have a normal conversation. and. Things like that, yeah. but you really keep up, you know, you, you know that you want to keep going because you have that middleman, Jesus, there to rely on. It's Emily and I, and obviously Jesus is the center of that, mm. right? So when times got rougher, Emily and I didn't get along. I could go, you know, to Jesus as the middleman and say, hey, you know, I don't, this isn't going well, you know, um, we're both, you know, struggling here, what do we do? And, you know, Jesus would be the middleman who would say, hey, you two love each other, yeah. Keep going, keep pushing forward, you know. Did this you is what you're intended that? to do. Oh, multiple times. <laughs> Come on. Nice. You know I mean, you know, but in a in a great way, you had that friend, you had Jesus, you know, to rely on and to, you know, really know, hey, this is you know, this is something that you're just gonna have to go through to in the end see the victory and sit here together and Yay. you know, we got to talk about this stuff and whatnot. How do you deal with people who nag and have constant doubts that your long distance relationship won't work? First of all, your relationship is between you and the other person. It's not between you and Come this on, person preach, and babe. that person and that person and all the other people around that are, you know, thinking that they're a part of your relationship in some <laughs> weird way, shape and form, but it's not. So first of all, first thing first. I'm you a gotta, realist. Exactly. You gotta, you know, not let other people a you know interfere with what you're doing and what you know God's will is. Obviously, this being said, like in a good general, you know, you're thinking clear, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm not talking about some unhealthy, you know, something in that way, shape, or form. Good point. I myself was one of those people. I I, I wasn't in you know for a long distance. But why would I do that? Why would I, you know, want to date this girl around the world? Well, you know, it's way more fun to. Have yeah, an, person, yeah have a, see the person in person, go to the movies, you know, go to go out to dinner, go do fun things together. Listen to music, sing exactly. songs, have fun, have dance parties. Alright, you know, you're just going off the rails. Eat sugar plums. <laughs> you know, the general perception is it's more fun to date in person. And I would agree with that. Like I would I would love that you would have just lived in Holland and Would not be nice. Exactly, you wouldn't have to go through it. So I would say, you know, <laughs> keep other people that you know have a negative impact more on what you know is right what you're doing you know try to block those out and just focus on what Christ is calling you to do and is that you know in my case to pursue Emily you know just to keep pushing forward in that. could you guys talk about a bit about the hard times you face being in a long-distance relationship and how you overcame them just the hard times was we had to learn to communicate really really well with each other 
which may paid very well for marriage, but we had to learn to say, this is how I feel. And this is where I felt like you let me down, or this is where I let myself down. Like you really have to have a great self-awareness about how you're feeling and be able to express that, which yeah. is really, really difficult. You have to learn that in long distance in order for it to work. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of times where you have to, you know, swallow your pride, you know, be humble and say, hey, you know, I'm going to try and objectively look at the past scenario or situation or how I, how I reacted or, you know, what I thought the situation was. And put myself in your moccasins. And put yourself, you know, in the other person's shoes and see, no, no moccasins, put yourself in the other person's shoes and see, you know, where they were coming from and try to, you know, do that very objectively. And that's very difficult. If you see uh, something in a certain way and the other person sees it the other way, you have to find a middle way somewhere. And, you know, you're going to have to give on both ends. Otherwise, it's not going to work. True. And so, you know, what we did in that situation was, yeah, we really forced each other to say, hey, you know, let's just stop this right here and see, try to go back. Obviously, and I would say, you know, obviously for women as well, for guys, obviously the thing, but women, you can very quickly get emotional about something and emotions play a big factor. Call out the ladies. Exactly. And emotions come into play and things can get a little, you know, wiggly woggly yeah. and you really can't. You know, you really can't see exactly what was going on, but you really learn to grow. And I, I, I grew, you know, oh, big man. time. We both grew big time, you know, just in a sense of now someone is correcting you, you know, in a justful way. And you have to, you know, take the critique and really learn from it and grow with it. Like any relationship. Yeah, and like any relationship. But You here, just can't hug after. Yeah, exactly. It's just, you know, nice emoji. You know, you get a thumbs up. Just kidding. Do you have any final tips for the people? Yes, I would say in any relationship, obviously keep prayer at the center, but especially in a long distance relationship, because that's really, when the times get rough, you need that center, you need that base to fall back on um, in order to, to have the strength to keep going. So Emily and I, we prayed from day one together and prayed every single day together, even though we were on a nine hour time difference. Yeah. That was the priority, especially on my end, the priority to really always put that in there. Obviously you're, you're communicating a lot via these days, you know, you have FaceTime, Skype, uh, Google Hangout, there's so many different channels where you can communicate on, which is very easy to do. You write a quick text, you write a quick yeah. you know, message, blah, blah, blah. However, I keep it personal in regards to writing actual letters. Just Write an actual handwritten letter. It really, you know, it really is special to receive an actual letter, you know, these days, of course. And packages. And packages, yeah. That really, um, you know, gives it an extra, you know, something, something that you can actually have a little tangible something. And you even know? send me fake flowers. Yes, because they would not Die go bad in the mail. Exactly. Yeah, and so I could find my fake flowers. That was really nice of you. Plus, they last a lifetime. Yep, I saw half them. <laughs> I know. Pretty good investment. Well, that was all for today. Today. <laughs> okay. We'll talk to you soon. Sayonara. Get it? Love it. Oh, that was Sorry. <laughs>